Hey everyone, John here, and today we're going to talk about our little buddy, the Sega Dreamcast. Now, in terms of security, this thing was locked pretty tight. Previous Sega home consoles like the Sega CD had no copy protection at all, and while the Sega Saturn did, people found ways around it using mod chips. However, with the Dreamcast, Sega made their own proprietary format called the GD-ROM. This may look like a CD or a DVD, but this was something only Sega could make, meaning your average person couldn't just burn their own Dreamcast games. So, this was basically an impenetrable format. Piracy couldn't exist on the Dreamcast. So, how come it's so easy to pirate Dreamcast games? Let us gaze at the majesty of the GD-ROM. These can only be read by a Dreamcast drive. Standard CD and DVD drives instead get this message right here. This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Please stop this disc now. So people actively use the Dreamcast itself as a GD-ROM ripper. They connected their Dreamcast to the same network as their PC using the Ethernet adapter and from there basically transfer the data from the GD-ROM to a PC. It was pretty complicated, but back then at least, it was basically the only way to rip GD-ROMs. These days, SD card ripping is possible as well. But let's say you ripped a GD-ROM, and now you've got the image, a GDI. What do you do with it? You can't burn a GDI onto a CD, because they're different technology. Dreamcast games seemed undefeatable. You can't burn your own copy if there's no public drive that can burn GD-ROMs, and plus you'd need a blank GD-ROM as well. And while the Dreamcast can read CDs, it can only boot them as audio CDs. Any attempt to burn a GDI onto a CDR would not have worked. So Dreamcast supports GD-ROMs and CD-ROMs. However, people also discovered a third format. There's GD-ROM, CD-ROM, and MIL-CD. A MIL-CD is just a regular CD-ROM, but with an extra layer of special Dreamcast encoding that provides exclusive features when loaded into a Dreamcast. Only 8 mil CDs were ever produced, and exclusively in Japan. This is one of them right here, and while my Dreamcast can load it as a CD-ROM, the actual mil CD portion is region locked. But if I were to bypass the region check using an action replay, we can see that mil CDs boot into the Dreamcast's game mode. This CD is called Nine Chairs, and when booted as a mil CD, it offers full screen video to accompany the songs. There's an internet function too, though unfortunately I'm not really sure what this does, I imagine just more information on the band or something. But yeah, this was the general purpose of a mil CD. Regular CD with Dreamcast exclusive stuff. And this was a major gap in the Dreamcast security. Regular CD-ROMs could boot into game mode if they were formatted as a mil CD. So, suddenly this format, which was barely used and was incredibly niche, became the international undoing of the Dreamcast. People could then take GDIs and reformat them as mil CDs, and from there on, Dreamcast piracy scene just blew up. It was as simple as taking a CDI image off the internet and burning it onto a CDR. There were no further security checks, no region locking. It was a free gateway. The impenetrable GD-ROM was not defeated, but a workaround was found all the same. This was a very big deal, and in the future, Sega would take away MIL-CD compatibility. If yours says Sega Enterprises on the bottom, then it very likely supports MIL-CDs, but if it says Sega Corporation, then it likely does not. So that's how piracy started, right? Thanks John, great piracy video. No, of course there's more to this. GD-ROM stands for Gigabyte Disk Read Only Memory, and it's 1.2 gigabytes to be exact, whereas a CD-ROM only holds 700 megabytes, and given the Dreamcast can't read DVDs, that meant that most Dreamcast games actively can't fit on a CD-ROM. So what do people do? Well, they compressed a bunch of stuff. I mean, a GD-ROM is almost double the storage of a CD, so compression had to be pretty tight. So let's do a little comparison. Here's a legit copy of Sonic Adventure on a GD-ROM, and over here is a less legit copy of Sonic Adventure on a CDR. Is this why European Dreamcast games have two places for discs? One for your legit one, and one for your not legit one? Is, is, that why they did, is that why they did this? So, FMVs and audio were usually the first thing to get hit by compression, and as you can see right here in the opening FMV, it is an awful quality on the CDR. And let's take a little listen to the audio as well. 
I gonna do with you? Now, oh, what am I gonna do with you? I think with this copy, most of the sound effects and voice acting are intact, but the music is way less punchy and incredibly quiet. I mean, in Emerald Coast, I think just the beach ambience noises are louder than the actual soundtrack. Load times could also suffer on a CD-ROM, with the GD-ROM usually being a lot faster. Some games would remove pieces of data entirely, while others just crunch them down. But I think the general point is, a GD-ROM still gives you a fuller experience, but I suppose without comparing, you probably wouldn't be able to tell in most cases. While this introduced a piracy scene to the Dreamcast, it also opened the doors to unlicensed software, and that's what I find really interesting. The action replay disc I used earlier to bypass the region check on the mill CD? Th that's actually a mill CD in itself. These cheat devices and region bypasses wouldn't be possible if people hadn't found a way to get a CDR to boot into game mode. And a very, very famous one is Bleemcast. Bleem was a premium emulator that people would actually buy. You could buy three commercial discs. There was a Tekken 3 disc, a Gran Turismo 2 disc, and a Metal Gear Solid disc. But there's no piracy here, these are only boot discs. You still need to own the games on PlayStation and swap the Bleem disc with them to get them to boot. And suddenly, the Dreamcast is emulating actual PlayStation games. And what's crazy is they ran better than PlayStation. These games offered essentially flawless emulation, hitting full speed with next to no graphical errors, all while running at a higher resolution than the PlayStation itself, going from 240p to 480p with anti-aliasing. The result is pretty transformative, and this was in 2001. Keep in mind, Gran Turismo 2 was only two years old, and it's running on the competing console. It even put PAL games in full screen, so European gamers were benefiting even more compared to the PlayStation. Bleem's disk security is ironically very hard to pirate. People have found a way to use the software to make their own Bleem disks, but the result is never quite as impressive. Like, yeah, Crash Team Racing boots here and it's pretty playable, but it's very far away from what Bleem was achieving with Gran Turismo 2. Bleem did plan to release far more games, but unfortunately, Sony had other plans. Sony took Bleem to court, expecting to win their case. However, they didn't. Bleem didn't have any piracy, and they fully owned the code that they developed, and this case heavily contributed to emulators being fully legal. And while that is a big win for Bleem, they could not afford the court costs, and so they went out of business anyway. But Dreamcast could play PlayStation games better than a PlayStation and even a PlayStation 2, all because of mill CDs. And to this very day, mill CD is used to breathe a second life into the Dreamcast, People are still releasing ports and brand new games on this system every single year. For instance, this copy of Cave Story is not official. Cave Story never came to the Dreamcast, but still, I'm playing it on the Dreamcast. It's remarkable. And Cave Story with the Dreamcast disc read screeching is pretty funny. And of course, fan translations are also viable because of Mil CD. I own Puyo Puyo 4 in Japanese, but of course the story is lost on me. But I can still burn the translation by Precise Museum onto a CDR, and suddenly I can experience the game in English. So while this caused many problems for Sega from a business perspective, to the end user, there's basically no negatives to the Mill CD. It allowed you to back up your games, play fan translations, play games way after the Dreamcast is even alive. This thing is part of the Dreamcast's DNA, whether Sega want to remember it or not. But without Mill CD, the Dreamcast would not be as fantastic as it is. Anyway, thank you for watching until the very end. I appreciate it so much. And because you're still here, it's hot take time. I believe that Sonic Adventure 1 is the superior game to Adventure 2. I think Adventure 2 may have some higher highs, but Adventure 1 is just more consistently fun for me, especially if you're doing a fresh playthrough and playing every stage. 
I don't think any character in 2 is anywhere near as fun as Sonic and Shadow. Whereas with Adventure 1, I'm having a ball with everybody. Even Big. I think, you know, he's, he's not great, but he's short-lived at least. Whereas everyone else, Gamma, Tails, Knuckles, who is way better in Adventure 1, by the way, they're, they're a blast. So yeah, that's, that's my hot take for the day. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.